to the uh, student. My name is Usman uh, Musa Musa. I will be uh, taking you uh, financial account one on a topic accounting for long time uh, construction uh, contract. The course is supposed to be uh, taken by two of us. I was Musa Musa and Dr. Mrs. Halima Sadia. We are going to be taking this course uh, in that uh, directions. Uh, however, for this uh, topic, I will uh, try to do justice to this. Uh, you are aware uh, Dr. Halima has uh, already uh, issued you some outline of uh, what we are expected to, to do in this uh, semester. Uh, one among is uh, this uh, topic, accounting for long time uh, construction uh, contract. The lectures uh, will uh, intend to we intend to achieve uh, these lectures in these uh, directions. First, the introductions, and then uh, followed by uh, the objectives, that is uh, what we intend to do. And then, and the main uh, content. The main content will include, we'll start by uh, looking at what is the meaning of uh, a contract. Then, we'll also look at uh, the types of uh, uh, the contract. Uh, after then, we we'll also uh, look at the method of accounting for construction uh, contract, which is the purpose of our, uh, our uh, which is the aims of our uh, these lectures. Then we we'll do that by uh, ruling out uh, two, uh, one or two uh, practice uh, questions that we we'll demonstrate uh, in using one of those uh, uh, methods of accounting for construction contract. And we are expected to conclude. We are now conclude the lectures. Uh, probably at the end of the lectures, we are expected to also go home with uh, an assignment. And uh, again, we we'll also uh, give you some uh, reference uh, materials for further uh, reading. Yes, uh, by way of uh, introductions, we are saying that accounting issues uh, relating to our consortial contract. Uh, as a lot of uh, timing, measurement, and recognitions of revenue, and the asset created during uh, the construction work. Not only that, the value assigned to work in progress has an effect on the income statement, that is the profit or loss account. And again, the value so created or reported are reported as current asset on the statement of financial positions, uh, which before now we is, is called uh, the balance sheet. Don't forget, the income statement has replaced the nomenclature of profit or loss uh, account. Why the balance sheet has not been replaced or to be known uh, or called as statement of financial uh, uh, positions. So uh, therefore, accounting for construction contract are also again guided by the provision of statement of accounting standard SAS 5 and the international accounting standard IAS 11. These are accounting standards are uh, regulations or guidelines that shows how uh, accounting treatment are to be presented, recorded, and, just, uh, uh, and prepared. So, SAS 5 was the initial for the previous. A standard that was issued uh, in order to guide the preparation of uh, accounting for construction uh, contract. That is when uh, Nigeria uh, Accounting Standard Board, that is that the body responsible for the issuance of accounting standard, uh, before the coming together of uh, the global acceptable accounting uh, standard, that is the international uh, financial reporting standard. What this means is that. Before 
the adoption of international uh financial reporting standard which is the standard that the whole world are using now to in order to have a single uh language of accounting the state of accounting standard 5 was the actual uh, standard they were issued under the national accounting standard board the body uh responsible for the regulation of accounting standard in Nigeria, that is the local standard but now that uh, Nigeria have adopted the international accounting standard alongside the other uh, nations. Then the standard that regulates the preparations of account accounting for uh, consortial contract is now uh, under number 11. So we have to also remind you of what the standard is, what the standard is at in the local in, in, the, in the local uh, gap and for the international uh, standard. So, SAS 11 and, I mean, SAS 15 and uh, IAS 11 are uh, the standard that regulate the uh, 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 preparation of uh, accounting for uh, construction contract. The uh, aims of this, our objective is to, uh, first of all, at the end of the lectures, we're expected to also uh, explain the meaning of a contract, as I've earlier told you, then thereafter we also identify the types of uh, the contract and above all, then the method of uh, accounting for uh, construction under contract. By way of definitions, we say a contract can be defined as an agreement between two or more parties. A contractee, one party called a contractee on one side and the other party called a contractor on the, other, on, the, on the other side. For the execution of job specified in the agreement within the value of uh, a constitution stipulated here another relevant clause that make up the agreement. What we are saying here that a contract is the relationship uh, that exists between one party and the other. The other being recognized as a contractee and the other, on the other hand being recognized as a contractor. For a specific job to be uh, executed on a branch, the contractee is the person awarding the uh, contract, while the contractor is the one executing uh, the uh, uh, contract. So this is the uh, relationship that call for these uh, elections. Then what are those various types of uh, the contract? There are basically three uh, types of contract. The first type of contract is that it could be fixed price uh, contract the second is the cost plus uh, contract. The third type of contract is the variable price uh, contract. When we say a contract is a fixed price, we say this is the type of contract where the parties involved have agreed on a defined sum as considerations for the contract. Whatever the level of frustrations in the variables that constitute the base of negotiations, the value would not be altered. For example, Ojo and Oche have agreed on a contract for the construction of an uh, electro theatre for the cost of uh, 3.5 million. Ojo, being the contracting, is liable to the tune of what? 3.5 million only. What we're saying that the fixed contract is a kind of contract where a price is determined and fixed and both parties agree to it. As in the classical examples of uh, giving. Now, when we say the, uh, the second uh, type of contract is the cost plus uh, contract. The cost plus contract is a kind of contract whereby 
the party to a contract agreement conclude whatever amount is expended by the contractor. Here, a profit margin will be paid to him. The margin will either be by way of a definite sum or a certain percentage of the cost. This is the case of uh, the cost plus uh, uh, a contract. Let's see, for example, Mr. A, a contractor, agree with Mr. B, uh, a contractor, for the construction of uh, uh, three classrooms on the basis of cost plus. The agreement, the agreement on whatever cost is incurred by Mr. B, a sum of uh, 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 101 one million will be given as a margin. The total cost incurred by Mr. B is 10 million. Then the value of the structure is then 11 million. Or, on the other hand, the agreement could be for a margin of 25 percent. Then the value of the contract is therefore, for you to now know the value of the contract now, will be 10 million plus 20 percent of what 10 million, which is the cost of what 12 million. This is the cost of cost uh, a plus. Remember, the sum of contract was uh, uh, 1 million, but it was given with the other margin. While the total cost in Cobham is 10,000, then the whole structure of the contract becomes uh, 11 uh, million because there is a cost plus. We will see in details when we demonstrate the particular aspect of it. When we say the, when we look at the, the third types of uh, a contract, which is the variable price uh, uh, contract. Under this type of contract, the value is not definite until completed. The value, whatever amount is a contract, will not be given to you until the work or the job specification is completed. They are subject to, because they are subject to variations. The variations can result from one of the three conditions. What we are saying that the value kind of a contract is the contract whereby the value is not definite until a job is uh, completed. It is because in the cost of construction or in the cost of work, there could be some differences that emanate as a result. So the differences would be a reconciled upon a factor into uh, the cost of uh, the contract before uh, you are going to be uh, paid. So there are three conditions that warrant, that give uh, 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 prudence to this uh, uh, contract. One, where there are change in economy variable, for example, inflations, it calls for uh, a variable is one of the conditions that, that will lead to uh, uh, sub, uh, the contract to be uh, considered under a uh, variable price uh, contract. The second uh, condition, it is where the contractee advance some structural alterations to the initial drawing. This third condition, it is where there is undue delay in obligating to the terms of the contract from the part of the contractee. For example, delay in payment of valuation fee or payment on any valuation submitted for payment. These are the classical conditions that will need to be present for us to uh, conclude and confirm that this is uh, uh, a, a, this type of contract fall under the variable uh, price uh, contract. And these are the kind of contracts that are normally been uh, uh, 
undertaken. Because the contractors will uh, always call for evaluations, evaluations in, in the course of his work. And the contractor will also want to be mobilized, give him a, what to call a, a valuation fee before he can go into uh, the, the work. Yes, on the method of accounting for a uh, consortial contract, on the method on accounting for uh, a consortial contract, there are basically uh, two methods as uh, provided by the uh, certificate of quality standard and of course uh, the international quality standard IS11. Recognize two methods of accounting for uh, acquisition contract. The first method of accounting for a consortial contract is the a complete contract method. While the second method of accounting for consortial contract is of course what we call the percentage of completion method. So we are going to look uh, at them one after uh, the other. On the complete contract method, here we are saying that the complete contract method uh, uh, depicts that the analysis of the contract will only be done when the contractor work is complete. That whatever expenses or whatever uh, amount in the queue in the course of uh, the uh, construction work, you shall be paid whenever the work has been completed. That at the level of completions, but at the level of completions, revenue will be marked with expenses. Don't forget our uh, the accounting concept and conversions. One of the accounting concept conversions, which is a matching uh, a concept. That is a matching concept, is a concept of accounting whereby uh, expenses are normally merged with uh, revenue in order to determine our net uh, income, as we used to do in our uh, when we are preparing our final account specifically in the income statement. We compare the expenses and the uh, gross profit to determine our net income. So this is a classical uh, uh, the principles that guiding the matching concept. So, so also this concept too are uh, also applicable when uh, accounting for a consortium uh, contract. So revenue are marked with expenses. In order to establish the profit and loss. But in doing that, there are some features that need to be guided, that will guide us in the choice of this uh, method. Whether we are to account under complete contract method or we are to prepare an account under a uh, percentage of completion uh, method. Particularly for a complete contract method, these are some of the conditions or some of the requirements that we need to be present before we could uh, either take the first method or the second uh, method. As in the case of the first method, now, is it that, is it that the contract is a short-term contract? What's a short-term contract? Maybe it is a contract which a lifespan is less than a year. It could be three, six months. Or is it a contract? Is this a long-term contract? Where it is very difficult to have a reliable estimate of a cut of both cost to completions and the percentage of contract executed. You know, a long-term contract, if it's a long-term contract, then it's a contract that takes above one year or more. All these conditions need to be satisfied. The top conditions in the choice of uh, the method 
is that under the completion contract method, cost incur, and you see that the cost incur and the billings on the contract are to be accumulated under the contract until the contract is uh, completed. Meaning, all expenses that you are going to incur in the course of uh, uh, the uh, uh, carrying out the work will be uh, 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 computed or the sum all together after you have concluded the contract. That is what conditions. Because foreseeable losses should be charged to the profit and loss account in the period they are identified. So for the purpose of establishing uh, foreseeable losses, each contract should be treated separately. Foreseeable losses here, for any one contract should be, also, should be set up against the anticipated profit of other contracts. A contract is to be regarded as complete only when all the activities relating to it are accomplished. General administration expenses to a particular period are to be charged to the profit and loss uh, account of the period. Under billing or over billing are uh, to be reported as part of work in uh, uh, progress. Now, on the second method of accounting for a uh, construction contract is that is the percentage of uh, completions method. Under these uh, situations, the margin concept is applied in respect of accounting EA during the process of what executions. You can see that. The first method, the matching concept is applied after the work has been completed. But on the percentage completion method, the matching concept of incomes and the expenses are normally accounted for during the process of work execution. As the job is ongoing, you take note of what your, your, the, the, you determine your income. So under this method, a notion of profit coming. We're going to explain to you what the notion of profit now coming. Notion of profit, which is the, the difference, notion of profit is the difference between the contract price and the total estimated cost to completions. Notion of profit come into a present when you are accounting for construction contract using the percentage cost of completion. And remember, the, no, the notion of profit it is a profit uh, that, that was arrived between when you compare the contract price and the total uh, estimated cost of completions. For example, if the contract price is 1 million and the total cost of completions, I mean the contract price is 1 million, and the total cost of completions is, uh, let's say, uh, 500,000. Then 1 million minus 500,000 equals to what? 500,000. So the 500,000 is the notional uh, profit. And again, the notional profit are uh, normally apportioned to each accounting year during the process. And it's referred to as attributable profit. Listen, where a, 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 a notional profit are allocated to an accounting year during the process, we refer to such notional profit as attributable uh, profit. And attributable profit is again established or computed through one or two uh, method. Yes. So, and these are the techniques. Let me remind you, these are the techniques 
that you need to take into cognizance when you are preparing accounting for long term agriculture. One is the notional profit. The second is the attributable uh, profit. A notional profit comes to be, as I told you, when you are allocating profit, when profit is going to be allocated in accounting here during the process as the work is ongoing. If you are expected to allocate to, to report profit during the accounting year, then you need to uh, you need to now compute the national uh, profit because this is not profit per se, but this is a profit ongoing. And for you to uh, uh, arrive at national profit is the difference between the cash price, the the the, 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 the contract price, and the total uh, estimated cost of completions. And again, if you are to report this to the company as the work in progress, then the profit, the national profit, is then far or considered or, or as attributable uh, a profit. And attributable profit are normally computed the one or two method. You either compute your attributable profit using the cost method. Or you compute your actual profit using what we call architectural valuation method. In terms of the cost method, the cost incur, if you are using the cost method to compute your actual profit, that is going to be the cost incur in any year plus the estimated cost to completion. Will give you the total estimated cost to completions. The total cost incurred in a year plus the estimated cost to completion, that is the futuristic cost. If you sum it together, you arrive at your what? Total estimated cost to completions. Hence, at total profit, it is equal to cost incurred. All over total estimated cost of completions multiplied by notional profit. But remember, notional profit is the difference between the contract price and total cost of completions. Why total cost of completions is the cost incurred in a particular year and plus the estimated future cost will give you the uh, total estimated cost of completions. That is the formula you apply when you are computing your actual profit using the cost, met, uh, cost method. The second method of uh, computing for attributed profit under is uh, under is under under the architectural evaluation method. The architectural the architect on site will normally give certificates showing the level of job executions, preparing ground for payment. That may tell you. But sometimes, if you are to uh, compute your 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 actual preferred using architectural validation method, we are saying that the architect, the architect, these are the expert. The professionals who know much about uh, our constructions will normally give you, will normally come in to the site and carry an assessment of the level of the progress of work. Then, thereby, issue certificate based on the level of job you executed in other directions. This was done in order to prepare a ground for payment. Now, attributable profit is determined here, bearing in mind the relationship, the value on the actual certificate, bear to the contract price on the national profit. So, the way to get your actual profit is going to be on the value of uh, whatever architecture has uh, taken into notice, all over the contract price multiplied by national profit. Again, 
Don't forget, if you want to compute your actual profit, actual profit under the cost method, we say it is you take your cost in job as a numerator and take your total estimate cost of completion as a denominator, multiply by additional profit. This is the approach we use when you are computing your actual profit using the cost method. But where you are using the architectural relation method to compute, to calculate for your actual profit, then we are saying that the numerator will represent the architectural valuations all over the denominator, the comfort price, multiplied by additional notional profit. But before we go into that, there are certain conditions that is apply for the choice of this method. Either you are to compute your actual profit using the cost method, or you are to use your uh, to compute for your actual profit using the architectural function method. There are conditions, there are requirements that need to be fulfilled before you'll be able to choose uh, among any of the two uh, methods of uh, computing for attributed profit. We are so much emphasized on this concept because this is what uh, uh, these are some of the uh, the techniques, the challenges, or the items that needed to compute when you are preparing accounting for a long time uh, contract. You have to calculate for initial profit, also calculate for attributed profit. As we are aware, when when notional profit is is allocated. To, uh, during the court of uh, during the uh, job executions, isn't it? Then there is no for you to now uh, articulate or compute for the uh, attributed profit, and this can take uh, uh, this take different dimensions. Either you use the cost method or executed valuation method. But again, the 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 the, the scholar emphasized again that there are conditions that need to be met before you could decide whether to. Uh, computer using the cost method or architectural evaluation method. There are two conditions. Number one conditions has three uh, elements attached. Number one conditions, whether to choose for the choice of the, the method of accounting for, uh, I mean accounting for attributed profit using the cost plus method or architectural value method. Number one, number one is that a contract in which the following terms are included. The goods or services to provide are received. Where the frequency of expression of work in progress and the certificate, certification procedure for the bill purpose in the case of architectural. Third, the manner of billing for work done and the terms of uh, payment. The Condition paragraph B of uh, the first condition is that the contractor has an adequate estimated process and the ability to estimate a uh, reliable, reliable put the cost to completions and the percentage of contract executed. Then the other conditions is in relation to the fact that the contractor has a, uh, a cost accounting system which adequately accumulate and allocate cost to final work in a manner consistent with its estimated process. So these are the first conditions that you need to take into cognizant, whether to choose the cost plus method or the additional uh, uh, valuation method. The second condition is that where the percentage of completion method is considered to give a fair measure of activity performed in each accounting period and the associated revenue is inherent. Then, under construction contract, expenses charge, the expenses charge, what we are saying, that the first, the first conditions met the requirement for the choice of what? Cost method. While the second conditions, if you now 
uh, is sure that the percentage of completion method is considered to give a fair measure of activity performed in each accounting period. With the associated revenue and expenses, then the architectural evaluation method is uh, applicable. You also need to note that under construction, uh, uh, under construction uh, uh, contract, expenses, the following expenses are normally charged. The expenses include materials, wages, direct expenses, incurred specific for the contract. Here, the material here are regarded as expenses. The material used for the site, in case if you are uh, in part, if you are in part in the construction of, uh, for example, say lecture theater. The materials needed to incur, you need to bring in sand, you need to bring in cement, and bring all other materials that are needed for the construction of such a, a, a project. Wages. Wages are the amount of money that is needed, that is needed for you to pay for the laborers, for the personnel that will engage in the construction of work. Then other, other payment that has direct or indirect relationship to the construction are considered as indirect expenses. So all these will form the expenses that are to be accounted for when you are accounting for a long time uh, a construction uh, a contract. In some circumstances, subcontracting work and higher equipment may, may, may be experienced. Yes, no doubt. This is because sometimes you might secure a contract, but you may not have the capacity or the, the complete equipment that will enable you to carry on such uh, constructions. At that time, then you may decide to supplement or have uh, some equipment that you may not be in position and you can hide. Take for example the construction work going on in the Kefi Abuja Expressway. If you look at it carefully, you could see that some of the machines that were used in the construction of uh, this uh, work are not really the entire ownership, the ownership was not, uh, was not really acquired by the Chinese company alone, but however the Chinese companies uh, have some part of the equipment to enable them to meet their uh, target. So all this, the sub, so if we are subcontracted or by way of hiring the equipment, it's also formed part of what the expenses that are need to be reported in accounting for a uh, construction contract. Another expenses that also need to be uh, taken into cognizance in accounting for construction contract is the issue of depositions. You know, uh, depositions as we used to charge it in the personal account of uh, a partnership or some prior of depositions is the reductions in value of an asset as a result of wear and tear. So it becomes an expenses that we charge in the uh, a construction uh, uh, contract. So the revenue that can only be determined through the process, revenue can only be determined through the process of estimations, either the true cost, uh, the true cost method or architectural valuation uh, method. What we are saying here, in a normal sense, income statements or profit and loss they account are normally prepared in order to ascertain the profitability of the business. In this case, 
The business in question here is the construction uh, the business. So how do you determine uh, what is profit? So profit can be determined in two ways. Either you use the cost method or the architectural uh, valuation uh, method. Also, uh, under okay, it's still a uh, the thing. Also under also under a uh, uh, construction contract, expenses charge include which include materials, wages, uh, direct expenses. In case specific with the contract, but in some circumstances, subcontracting work and high equipment may be spread. There are what we are saying. There are other ways to account for for to account for this. The other method of uh, uh, accounting for business contract is also the cost method. Where the actual product will be the cost incurred all over total estimated cost multiplied by contract price. This is the this is the case. You apply this formula in the case where a contract is a complete contract method. Don't forget, there are two methods accounting for, for construction contract: complete contract method and percentage of completion method. So the first uh, method was in respect of what where the contract is uh, taken to be uh, a, a, a percentage of uh, percentage of completion contract method. But when the contract is known to be uh, computed under the completed contract method, then to uh, the attribute profit, if using the cost method, would be the cost incurred all over total estimated cost multiplied by contract price. Or if you decide to use the architectural valuation method, then you first of all determine your work in progress. And work in progress equals to the cost incurred plus attributable profit minus a uh, progress payment. The cost incurred is the total cost incurred during the executions and attributable profit I told you it is the the uh, the uh, cost incurred all over total expenses total expected cost incurred multiplied by national profit. A national profit it is the difference between the uh, contract price and total estimated cost incurred. So, minus the progress payment, that is the uh, valuation fee. But if you want to go on the on the, on the contract, you are normally giving giving an amount to an amount called uh, valuation fee. You be you be mobilized. So the the progress payment represents the valuation fee. Now. I have with us here an, uh, a classical uh, illustration because sometimes accounting uh, uh, problems are best understood when you uh, have the practical uh, problems at hand and then you prefer uh, solution to them. Then we will now appreciate this uh, uh, our techniques. For example, our question one: Al Okisa Enterprise had undertook to build a giant coal bunker for Nigeria at a contract price. Of 150,000. Estimated that the work will take 18 months to complete. 
At the financial year ended, the expenditure on the contract was given. Now, you first of all have to learn from the various types of contract and methods of accounting for contract that we have able to explain. Look at this case. How do you position this type of uh, the case? It's a case where a contract was given to build, to, to, given to Al Kesa Enterprise to build a giant uh, coal bunker for Nigeria at a contract price of 50. This is a case of fixed contract price. And the work will take eight months to complete. You see, this is a case of what completed uh, contract method, isn't it? So the approach to these questions, we first, you ask yourself, what kind of contract is this? By this, you agree with me that this contract is a fixed contract type. And therefore, given a team to complete, meaning you shall be paid after uh, pay, uh, after work has been completed. So, the appropriate accounting method that will uh, suit this uh, uh, case at hand will be the completed contract uh, method. But let's listen that at the financial year ended, the okay, let's take the question again that Alkisa Enterprise had undertaken to build a giant coal bunker for Nigeria at a cash price of 150000 naira. Estimated that the work take 18 months to complete. Therefore, at its financial year ended, the enterprise, the contractor, incurred the following uh, expenditure that on materials 30,000 was incurred on direct wages 40,000 was incurred on direct expenses 5,000 was incurred then there was a cost on plant which is amounted to what 35,000 naira then the company also hired a plant uh, to the tune of what 2,000. Then there was a sundry tool at cost uh, to the tune of what 3,000. Then the business continued to inform you that the written value of the plant at the year ended was 25,000, while the value of the sundry tools was estimated to be 500. However, Alkisa Enterprise estimated future cost was also given. That material in future materials will cost 13,000. Weight will cost 25,000. Direct expenses will cost 2,000. 900. While again, sundry tools at cost also cost uh, 2,000. The company estimates that the plant had a written down value of 15,000 at the end of uh, the contract, and the sundry tools would be worth 1,900. 1, so at the end of the year, the value work satisfied becomes uh, 100,000. While the cash received from the customer amount to what? Uh, 60,000. The question is you are required to prepare, uh, having given these provisions, you are required to prepare the contractor uh, account. The contract account. Sorry. Uh, sorry. 
Yes. We the sorry the slides for the solutions uh, it was not cleared. Uh, it's very unfortunate. But what I want to demonstrate here, I want us to, to see how we can demonstrate this. But as a business uh, uh, management student, a 300 student, and I know you are conversant with uh, the way we prepared our, uh, our, our financial accounting. If you are listening, you help yourself by uh, opening an account, a ledger account, by drawing a straight line and then divide the uh, straight line into two equal half. If you do that, you have uh, a ledger form. Then the name of uh, the company which the account is to prepare for is very important. You write it. In this case, our Alkisa Enterprise is the name of our business. Then, what are you preparing? Uh, contractor account. That's the heading. So the solution, the heading for solution will be Alkisa Enterprise. Then the account you are preparing, a contract uh, account. If you have done that, write that at the top as a title. Then you draw a straight line. Then divide the straight line into two equal uh, half. The left hand side I represent our debit uh, uh, entry. We record our debit. Uh, uh, items. Then the right hand side, which is all the, uh, the money represented to credit side, was also a record in our revenue or income. So you have a ledger now open for an accuracy. One side be debit side and the other side credit side. Meaning the left hand side represents our debit side, then the right hand side represents our credit side. Then the debit, uh, uh, the debit side of uh, the ledger, the contract account ledger of Alcursa, will record all the expenses, while the credit side of uh, the Alcursa enterprise consult account will record the revenue or income. So, by nature of this, uh, by virtue of these questions. Alcresa, the expenses that was incurred in Alcresa are in, in, in two aspects. There were the current expenses and there were futuristic expenses. The current expenses, one, you would debit materials, materials. Took materials, take it to the debit side with a ledger, write materials, amount 30,000 debit. You also uh, report the direct wages. Is an expenses. You also debit the the, the account, the contract account, with forty thousand. By writing direct wages, amount forty thousand. Still in the uh, the debit uh, uh, side, we have plant. Plant hired the the company uh, hired a plant, which is which form of expenses to the business. So plant hired amount to what two thousand. You also record. Remember that the positions are also an expenses when are also I record recorded as expenses when accounted for a uh, construction contract and other final account. So 
There was a depreciation of what? There was depreciation. Here, depreciation for plant. That the plant had cost the plant of machines. So you write depreciation. Write depreciation, or you can do your work somewhere. Say depreciation. In bracket, plant. The cost of plant was 35,000. But we were told that they were, they were written down value of the plant at the year ended was the tune of what 25,000. Now, for you to know the amount of uh, deposit that has been charged to the debit side of the account, you need to now minus the 25,000 is in the value of the plant from the cost of the plant, which is 35,000 minus 25,000. Then the positions will be reported as what? 10,000. Then 10,000 is the value of the plant now. But don't forget it was purchased at what? 35,000. But it has been put to use. And as such, the value has reduced to what? 10,000. So 10,000 is the Depreciation chart that will be reported expenses to the account. There was also a sundry and asset that also suffered depreciation, like sundry tools, of course, was 3,000. But in this case, the value of sundry tools was estimated to be what? 500. Isn't it? And therefore, the cost of sundry tools was 3,000, but it was made to cost 500. It has also suffered another at the position so you also charge the position of sundry tools by minus 300 from 500 then the value of sundry tools that will be reported to the income and uh, specimen of the contract account becomes too far that is that so the expenses as part of this question consign is the direct materials direct wages direct expenses and then at the position plant and the higher. This was the expenses incurred during uh, the execution of what? The work. Then they were given a, a progress payment. The company, in terms of revenue now, the revenue now that the company estimated that the plant will have a return value of 15000 and at the end of the contract, the subject to a debtor will also work what one line. But then the year, the value of satisfied is 100. What the cash price, or the cash received from the customer is what? 60,000. So the cash, the progress payment will be reported as revenue in the revenue side, as the credit side, as cash progress uh, payment. Progress payment. Then what is left now? For us to do now is to now uh, calculate our attributable uh, profit. Now that we have known our our revenue to be sixty thousand as cash or pocket payment, and our total cost incurred during the course of the work, if you add it, thirty thousand, forty thousand, five thousand, two thousand. 10,025, you will get 89,500 as cost incurred. So, attributed profit will be cost incurred plus estimated, to the estimated cost to completion. The estimated total cost to completions. I mean, uh, multiplied by our notional profit. The notional profit, again, it is the contract price minus total estimated cost. The contract price was 150,000. While the total cost incurred during the execution of the work was uh, 89,500. 89,500 is the result of what? Our summation of what? Total expenses from 30, 40, 5,000, 
2,000 and 10,000 plus 25,000. So our notional profit will be uh, will be uh, wait a minute 150,000 minus 89,500. Notional profit becomes 60,000. Five uh, uh, hundred. Total cost to completions. Total cost. No. National profit equals to uh, uh, the contract price minus total estimated cost to completions. The total cost estimated cost to completions. Uh, our contract price we know is to be worth 150,000 and our total cost incurred during the equation is known to be 89,500. Then the total estimated cost to completions will be the cost incurred during the execution of the project and the future estimated cost to be given. Let's go back to the question again. Our Kessel Enterprise estimated cost to completion was materials 13,000, wages 25,000, direct expenses 29, and there was a sundry tools at cost of about 2,000 naira. Then this was another additional cost incurred. So it is the result of this total cost here. Plus the cost incurred make up the total cost of completions, of which we are to now subtract from the co uh, contract price to give us our emotional profit. Now, to uh, total estimated cost, with, uh, 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 future cost was 13,000, wages was 25,000, then the other expenses was uh, 29, then there was a sundry tools at cost which is 2000. But we are told that sundry tools was expected to be worth 500 in previous year. So we are bringing the, the back the 500,000 in addition to the 2000. Because we are told that at the end of uh, the contract, sundry cost was expected to be worth 19. So it's going to be addition of 5,000 plus 2,000, which is 2,500, 2,500, which is the initial uh, value of sundry debtors. Minus 1,000, the word now, understand? So the value of sundry debtors will now become 600. 5,000. 100 plus 2,000 minus 1,009, 600. Then, there was also a depreciation of plant. The plant who have also suffered a depreciation of uh, 2,500, the company has been that the plant will have a written down value of 15,000 at the end of the contract. The plant who have suffered a uh, written down value of uh, to, uh, of uh, the initial, uh, the initial of two five, then it now further suffered additional uh, written down value again to the tune of about fifteen thousand. Then the deposition of plan will become twenty five thousand minus. 15,000, which will uh, give the value of uh, our plan to about 10,000. Uh, so the future, estimated future cost will become 13,000, 25,000, 29, 6,000 for standard uh, tools and depreciation and depreciation on plan to be 10,000. Then total future estimated, uh, total estimated future cost becomes 
51,500. Now we can now substitute that into our formula. The, for us to, what are we looking for? We are looking for our attributed profit. Because we know that the cost in cure is 89,500. And the cash and the uh, progress payment was 60,000. 60, then our direct profit now becomes cost incurred, which is uh, 89,500, plus estimated cost of completion, which is 89,500 plus 51,500. That is the estimated cost of completion, which we have just uh, calculated. Well, now, if you add 89,500 plus 51,500, to get your total estimated cost. Don't forget, cost incurred plus estimated cost to completion equals to total estimated cost. And the cost incurred is 89,500 as per the questions. Then, estimated cost to completion was 51,500 as per the questions on when all uh, Al Uxa Enterprise is uh, uh, downloaded, give us, give us estimated uh, that there was expected future cost to go this. Now, the value now, total expected cost now become 141,000. 141, so, for us to calculate our national profit now, will now become national profit equals to uh, cash price minus total expected cost. The cash price was 150, while the total expense cost was 141,000. Then the notion of profit becomes 99,000. 150,000 minus 149,000. 149,000 was the total estimated cost. Total estimated cost, we are saying cost incurred plus estimated cost of completion. The cost incurred 89,500 plus 51,500. Total cost in total expected cost becomes 149. So the difference of this from the cash price, the contract price, is what it would regard as what national profit. So national profit is the contract price 150 minus total uh, expected cost. The result is what 9,000. So now we can now comfortably now compute for our attributable profit now. So attributable profit will now become cost in cure, which is 89,500, all over total estimated cost, which is 141,000, multiplied by our notional profit, which we arrived at what, 9,000. So attributable profit will now become, if you now uh, uh, calculate the fraction 89,500 as our cost incurred all over total estimated cost 89,500 for example uh, 89,500 all over 41,000 our estimated cost to completion total estimated cost to completion Multiply by 9,000. The result is 5,730. So our attributed profit that will be reported in the contract account is, uh, is, is 5,713. So attributed profit plus the cost incurred minus our cash progress payment. The difference is our work in progress. Work in progress, you report it. You, re you, re you report it in your credit side of uh, the contract account after the progress payment. That is work in progress. Uh, I mean cash. So work in progress, so the, the difference between the progress payment and the total cost incurred here 
in addition to the actual profit, which is 995,213,000 minus 60,000. The difference is work uh, in progress. This is a classical case for, this is the classical example or illustration of suggest solutions when you are accounting for a consortial contract using the completed uh, compra, uh, contract uh, method. Uh, a completed contract method. But this lecture, again, has already been uh, uh, taken by has already been taken uh, physically by the first group of uh, the 200 level, I mean 300 level uh, visa, this, uh, student who has better to take ACC 211 as a prerequisite. The other group will also uh, listen to this, but we are going to interchange to also have a physical interactions where we are going to demonstrate physically these solutions on the whiteboard. The conditions I am in now will not uh, permit me to demonstrate to you uh, practically. I intend on doing that using a slide, but uh, I don't know what happened. The slides cut out along the along the line and it's not well uh, represented as you can see. But I will take time to demonstrate at uh, the practical as I have done in the first uh, uh, group. Thank you.